I used to work as a technical curriculum creator where my entire job was to learn new technologies and then create training material for the same for software professionals. That experience has not only taught me how to learn things fast but also how to learn them effectively. And in this video, I'm going to share the same with you. Welcome back to episode 2 of Learning Rust with me. In the previous episode, the primary programmer says that you must learn at least one new programming language every year. I'm going to document my process of learning a new programming language, specifically Rust. So without any further chat, let's get to learning. So I just finished reading chapter number 2, where we built a guessing game. This is not the end of my learning journey. Let me know if you're interested in watching a part 2 of this video and I'll see you guys in the next. In this video, I'm going to learn about ownership and borrowing in Rust. I know, I know, I've seen the memes, but I am prepared. I've brought my secret weapon with me, the Feynman's Technique. In case this is the first time you're hearing of the Feynman's Technique, then let me explain it for you. The Feynman Technique is a method of learning and understanding concepts deeply by explaining them in simple terms. It involves four steps. First, Pick the concept or the topic that you want to learn. For me, it's going to be ownership and borrowing in Rust. Step number two is to explain what you've just learned in simple and plain language as if you were teaching it to a child or someone who does not have any prior knowledge of the topic. For me, I do not have a child readily available for me, so I'm going to use social media, which means this YouTube channel, and I'm going to write an article on Medium explaining this topic in plain and simple language. Step number three is to identify the gaps in your knowledge. If you're struggling to explain something, then this means that there are some gaps in your knowledge. Now to fill these gaps in your knowledge, you must revisit the source material or do some additional research in order to fill these gaps. For me, my source material is going to be the official Rust book. I'm using the interactive version of this book. And for additional research, I'm going to be using YouTube, ChatGPT, and Google. Step number four is to review and simplify. Revisit your explanation of the topic and try to refine it and improve it by removing any jargon and using as simple language as possible. And that's it. By the end of these four steps, you'll hopefully have a much deeper understanding of the topic that you set out to learn. So without wasting any more time, let's get started. So I'm going to start reading chapter number four from the Rust book. While I'm reading this book, I'm also going to be making certain notes. The interactive version of this book allows me to highlight portions of the book as well as add notes to them. But I'm going to be using Notion to create my own notes. And once I have my notes ready, I'll start drafting up my Medium article. So let's jump into it. So I finished reading the first subchapter, which is about ownership. So far, I have not really faced any difficulties in understanding the topic. So I'm going to move to the second subchapter, which is about references and borrowing. One thing I would like to add here is that if you have prior experience with statically typed languages such as C++ or Go, then you would find it much easier to grasp these topics. Otherwise, you're going to be bombarded with several new concepts at the same time like pointers, memory, ownership, borrowing, etc. And it's going to be very intimidating. Luckily for me, my first programming language was C++, which I am very thankful for. And I've also worked a little bit with Go, so I have a solid foundation for me to jump into these new concepts of ownership and borrowing. So I'm going to head to a cafe now and resume my reading there. Okay, so while I was reading the second subchapter from the book, I was going through the topics of permissions and it fried my brain so much that I decided to take a break and come back home from the cafe. After that, I decided to watch a few videos. I usually start with text-based content whenever I'm learning and when I feel stuck, I then go and watch a few videos and then come back to the text material again. So I came back home and I tried to search for videos on the borrowing permissions in Rust and I came across a couple of Primogen's videos. They were funny as hell. I still don't understand the topic completely. So I decided to reread the second subchapter again, but a little bit more slow this time. Hopefully this little break is going to help me in understanding these permissions better. So that was all of the progress that I was able to make today. I'll see you guys tomorrow. It's a brand new day today and my goal for the day is very simple. Just finish reading the rest of the chapter. 
this is my status update for the day. I was able to finish reading the rest of the chapter. However, I did not have enough time to try out the exercises. Tomorrow, I'm going to start with the exercises and also start with the blog post that I set out to write, which is going to be the ultimate test if I understood the topic correctly or not. So I'll see you guys tomorrow where I'll share my process of writing Medium articles. This is day number four. Yesterday, I did not film anything. I spent the entire day just writing up the first draft of my article. Well, not the entire day, but whatever time I had left. The article ended up being so long that I decided to break it up into two parts. The first part talks about ownership and the second part talks about borrowing and maybe a third part that will talk about slices. Today, I'm just going to put in the final finishing touches. I'm going to review this draft. I'm going to add more examples, update and simplify the language a little bit it and once I'm done it will be ready to go live. Since I am on a publishing schedule on YouTube I will only be able to complete the first part of this article which is about ownership because I have to edit and publish this video as soon as possible. If I decide to create a third part to this video series then you'll find the second part of this article in that video. But for now this is all that I have got. Now let's talk about my process of writing these medium articles. As you can see here, I am not new to writing articles on Medium. I've been writing on Medium since 2019. I'm not very frequent here, but I usually come to Medium when I want to document my process of learning something or when I learn something and I feel like I'm going to forget about it in the near future. But if I think that I will probably need this knowledge again in the future, then I make sure that I document whatever I have learned as a Medium article or as any other blog post for that matter. You can think of a Medium profile as my personal knowledge base instead of going about and looking for random articles on the internet if I've written about something previously my own articles end up being my go-to resource for learning my teaching style or my explaining style is representative of my learning style as well so whenever I want to learn something new what I do is first learn about that thing then I learn about that thing the second time what I mean by this is that I usually use different resources to learn about the same topic so this could mean that I read the documentation and to supplement my understanding, I will then end up watching a YouTube video as well on the same topic. So after I feel confident about the topic, then I write up the first draft of the article. The first draft begins with a loose structure of the topics that I want to talk about. I like to structure my article in a way that each topic builds upon the previous topic. It's very important for me that the article flows naturally. The reader shouldn't feel like they're jumping from one topic to another and then coming back to it later on. After I have my structure ready, what I like to do is to take up bullet points or to copy and paste the notes that I've made previously. These could just be the exact text that I've highlighted from the perks or exact quotes from a video. I just dump them all under the relevant topics inside of my structure. Once I have my structure and my bullet points, that is when I start creating a story out of it. I rephrase the bullet points in a way that feels more natural. I like to simplify the bullet points further and give it my own voice. If I feel like the explanation is missing something, I add more content into it. Then it's just a process of reading the article, refining it, adding the missing points, simplifying the language, reading the article again, seeing if something is missing, adding more examples if required, and so on until I feel satisfied with the final product. This process of writing does not only help me understand a topic better, but it also helps cement the knowledge that I've just acquired and and at the end of this process, I have some personal written notes that I can always refer back to. If you're also trying to learn something new, I 100% recommend this approach for you if you want to learn something properly and cement your knowledge into your brain. Well, that's all I had for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one.